Well, good evening, everybody. Tonight is Wednesday night, and it's also known as Wine Down Wednesday here in our fabulous wine drinking studio. How are you doing this evening? I'm wonderful. How are you? I'm fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. So tonight, you know, we figured that there's a lot of people in this world that don't know a ton about wine, and um, we don't want to make anyone feel like they have to know all the terminology and everything there is in order to enjoy our shows and, and all that good stuff. So we figured it might be good to do a basic wine 101 class, and what we're going to probably do is more of a series. So tonight, we're going to start kind of basic. We're going to talk about white grapes, red grapes, varietals that go, both, go with both. Um, some of the aromatics that come along with it, some of the tasting profiles that come along with it, and uh, some other information in between. So after that, we'll get into some other shows. We'll start getting a little more complex and talking about some other aspects of Wine 101. Um, tonight, we actually brought in wines. You can see them above our heads. Um, we did start with M. Sellers, their Brut Rosé. We're both pretty big fans of the bubbles. My hands down, <laughs> one of my favorites. She, she was... Okay, she was. I was just kidding. But we do love it. We a little a, bit. We, yeah, we did a show with Matt like a week ago or two, no, two weeks ago. And um, we love this. We love this wine. That Brew Rosé. It's a good way to, you know, go over notes and talk about what we were doing tonight. And then these are the wines we chose tonight. We've got a white up here that you'll see. This is uh, Michael David's Freak Show Cap, uh, Chardonnay, excuse me. And then out of our reds, we did Buena Vista's Reserve Cabernet Sauvignon. So we have a white and we have a red. I'm excited. I'm pretty excited. Yeah. It's going to be good. I like to learn. Now, this is really important, everyone. We are going to have our chat open. We have both chats. Uh, hi, Lisa Bross. How are you this evening? So you can log into the show on any platform. This is a free show. So you can go to any of our Facebook pages, whether it's Winemaker Wine Tastings page. That's the best place to go to. Um, we do have our Discord chat. So for our members of our website, we'll have that open as well. And we want you guys to ask questions tonight. Also, for all of you uh, that are out there, if anybody wants to be live tonight, um, Post in our chat and say, I would have questions and I would like to be on TV. And then what we're going to do is I will shoot you over a quick link. You can open it up. It uses a web browser in your phone uh, camera or your uh, computer camera. And we'll actually bring you into the show and you can ask questions to be part of our event tonight. I think someone should do that. I do too. I think it's super exciting. I mean, you get to actually be a part of it, mm -hmm. ask questions. It's not just us talking the whole time. I mean. And we can see people. Right. So we can 100% find you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and we can turn our camera off and put it all about you. And we can take a little break. Here we go. <laughs> so with that, we're going to get started here. Um, Can I start with white? Sure. I think that's a great idea. You want to lead us off with the white? I would love to. Yeah, talk I, a little bit about it. I love white wine. I, I, I wish I could say the same. I'm not the biggest white wine drinker. No. I do like uh, I do like white burgundy. If I was going to drink white wine, Chablis and white burgundy is work as my go-to. But I'm a rosé guy in summer. So I'm a Sauvignon Blanc. Sauvignon Blanc is good. It is. All right. All right, so, go girl. There I'm going to sit back and let her do the show the rest of the night. I'll be great. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is going to be interesting if I'm leading this one. Um, all right, let's start with taste taste styles, wine styles, taste categories, however you want to, whatever you want to call it. I like it. Um, let's go with fresh and unoaked first. So fresh and unoaked, we're talking what? I mean... My I, favorite. Oh, Sauvignon Blanc? Yes. What else? Is there anything else that calls in that kind of category or style? Pinot Grigio. Pinot Grigio. Mm -hmm. Pinot Gris, depending on where you're from. Valid. Yeah, That's Pinot true. Grigio, Italy. Pinot Gris, more of a, an organ thing. A little bit of French, right? Chablis. Chablis. Yes. Chablis. Absolutely. Yeah. Crisp. Yeah. Light. Probably is sometimes a little bit more acidic as well. 100%. And not really sweet. So there's not a ton of sweetness and hardly any oaky character. Right. Which is probably why I love it. Right. And I would say like with white wines, I think there's really like, there's almost like three basic things for a wine drinker. Sweet white wine, mm -hmm. your dry light white wine, Correct. and your dry heavier wines mm -hmm. like the Chardonnay's. So if you're new to wine drinking, you know, there's, I, I tell people when I do like dinners and stuff, um, I think most people start with Riesling. It's kind of like the introduction of wine. It's sweet or semi-sweet, but it's a little yeah. bit more palatable. It's easier to get down. And then Agreed. you can get into some other things like the Sauvignon Blanc and Pinot Grigio, but I definitely think those are where you go. So you're fresh and unoaked, the Sauvignon Blanc, Pinot Grigio, Pinot Grigio, that's good. Amen. What else do you got for us? Earthy. Ooh. By far an interesting word, in my opinion. And my favorite, old world style, earthy, yes. dirty. Dry, fuller body. You did seem dirty. <laughs> we want to get it together. Um, unoaked or lightly oaked. So still something I would probably enjoy. Um, Chardonnay, white burgundy. Yeah, a little know? French white burgundy. There you are. That's the one you would go for. Yeah, I mean, because those, I mean, Chardonnay and white burgundy, For if you don't know, now you know. <laughs> Chardonnay and white burgundy, same thing. Chardonnay is traditionally more of a non-France thing, California and so mm -hmm. forth. But... They use that same Chardonnay grape in France, and they call it white burgundy. It doesn't say Chardonnay in the bottle. It says white burgundy in the bottle. So, If you had to pick, which one would you prefer? 
turn. Chardonnay or white burgundy? I think I'm gonna go white burgundy just I'll for me. Too. It sounds kind of cool. Yeah. And I really like French wine, so. Okay, all right. What else you got for me? Aromatic, which. It's a great word. It is a great word, <laughs> as we started <laughs> earlier, <laughs> trying to discuss this. Um, intense aromas, right, and flavors that come from a particular grape. So if you want to get into two, three particular grapes for whites, we have uh, Pinot Grigio. That's going to be a little bit more aromatic, some of those fresh mm -hmm. flowers. Lemon lime. Yep, yep. Pear. Um, green apple. Nice and crisp. We could go into Sauvignon Blanc, which is, of course, my favorite. So very citrus forward. Gooseberry and elderberry, which are two of my favorite words. <laughs> they are, cool words. <laughs> they like are great words. Um, and freshly cut grass, which is interesting. And that's going to be more of your, okay, so Sauvignon Blanc, tradition, Loire Valley, France. Right. Which is going to be your grassy. Also, they kind of turn a little bit semi-on. It's going to be the great fried that they go with. Um, do you have a preference, California, New Zealand? I know a lot of people like those New Zealand I'm sandwiches. a New Zealand oh, yeah. Sauvignon Blanc, yes. That Marlboro area? Yes. Okay. That is my favorite. Um, and there's also another region that people don't really talk about that I kind of get into with the past players. And the reason I really say this is because if you like, you kind of like New Zealand, but you kind of like California, look for South Africa. No one talks about it. There's some Sauvignon Blancs coming from South Africa that really are a balance between the two. You get a little bit of the same characteristics from Marlboro, New Zealand, and from California, nice balance. I'm going to stick with New Zealand. Okay, good. But we can try one together once. I, I'll make sure. I'll, I'll find one. I'll, Absolutely. I'll get one. I'm like, in. Part of the next show. <laughs> Um, and then Chardonnay, right? So it's buttery, vanilla, and toast, which is, this is yours, Chardonnay. Right, yeah, and these are like our rich, yes. richer style white wines. Yes, and 100%. And the, the more the oaky ones. And yeah. So I'm not a big California Chardonnay fan. I, I just don't think I'm surprised. Very oaky. Yes. I, I, for me, I, sometimes I feel when I drink from the, I'm, I'm kind of chewing on wood chips a little bit. Okay. That's why I kind of go with the French, a little bit more fruit forward. So you're getting a little bit more of the fruit instead mm -hmm. of a little bit more of the toast from the barrel that's mm -hmm. aged in. And then when you talk about, um, for all those that, when you taste Chardonnay, have you ever like heard the description? It's kind of creamy, like a creamy mouthfeel. Yes. That comes from malactic fermentation. That is much more advanced than Wine 101 Class A. So yeah. we're going to wait to get into that. We're but, an encyclopedia. <laughs> I, I, I might have been drinking wine for a little while, what can I say? But yeah, that's malactic fermentation is typically what causes a lot of that creaminess in your chardonnay mm -hmm. mouthfeel. So, and those are like bigger white wines that go with some of your bigger fishes, even like the salmons and all that stuff. Salmon's one of my favorites. Salmon and chardonnay. There we go. Boom. Boom. <laughs> and the last one, let's go with the fourth. We're at rich oaky wines. And those are going to be like your big. Fairly dry, full bodied, um, pronounced oaky character for sure. Right. So probably your big California chardonnay. Yes. Shall we? You could try while you're talking about it. I mean, I don't think that Michael David does a ton of uh, oak on their Chardonnay. Because we did a show with them of recent, and um, if I remember correctly, as you said it wasn't like t it wasn't super oaked. Um, I think it was done a lot in stainless steel, as well as what they call neutral oak. So instead of having um, brand new French oak barrels that give a lot of woodiness, uh, well, a neutral barrel is typically a barrel that's been used for a few yeah. years. So it doesn't have all that big oakiness to it. The smell is not. That big, it's definitely big woodiness. Mm -mm. You like it? Um, I'm not completely off of it, so yes. <laughs> well, that's and, always good. Yeah, Chardonnay's not, not my top three. See, I totally blew it. I did not have a Sauvignon Blanc for the light of this evening. You get in that uh, that green fruit in the nose. I'm actually pleasantly surprised. See, I'm telling you, last time I had, I'm not a big California Sharp fan, but I had this, like, Michael David did it good. Did it real, real good? Phenomenal. Yeah. I would actually order this. It's not good. What? Don't sip it. No. Coronavirus. No. Pandemic. There's a, a, a <laughs> plaster thing to here. You can't see it. It's perfectly good. 100%. Yeah, it smells really good. It's delicious. Yeah, it's actually quite nice. Mm -hmm. And I didn't make it overly cold. So I'm going to give everyone else so, a little Am I allowed to do that? Yeah, please do. I just, yes. So it's when you have wine. white wine, even red wines. Anytime you have a wine, that the colder you serve it, the less you're going to pick up the aromatics, the less of the flavor you're going to have. So especially with uh, Chardonnay, which is a bigger style of white wine, um, I say you want to serve it right around the 58 to 60 degree range. That's my personal, because it brings out so much more of the character of the wine. Um, and then some of your crispier wines, Sauvignon Blanc, that mm -hmm. you spoke about earlier, you can do those a little bit cooler for sure. 
but I still don't like ice cold out of refrigerator. I want yeah. to get it warmed up a little bit and so you can taste it and smell it. It's just way more enjoyable. My wine fridge is set at 54. Really? Mm -hmm. So it's perfect. It's perfect. And there's tests if you put the, for red wine, if you put the bottle to your cheek, it shouldn't be cold and it shouldn't be warm. It should just 100% agree just with your body temperature and feel comfortable. No kidding. I know. I didn't know that. Yeah. See? See? She's teaching me now. Things <laughs> are good. Wine 101, folks. <laughs> We're going good here. Can we play a game? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm scared. Sure. Why not? <laughs> this is exciting. Okay. You said this is my show, so I'm in now. Uh, you're, in, you're running the show here. You're in charge. That's perfect. Okay. Name me five to seven popular white grapes. Popular? Okay. I'll give you like three or four popular. Because I can name some popular ones that are easy. Like well, don't Riesling, get show off me. I was going to totally get show off I know, <laughs> I know you. All right. So hit me with like five to seven. Okay. How about this? I'm going to do six. I'm going to give you three popular and three that I think people should go out and try sometime. Is okay. And what happens if we get all six? I picked the six that I thought you would say. So if we get six out of six. Wow. What are we going to do? Dance? I'm in. <laughs> okay. Dance we're we're dancing. All right. Nikki's showing out then. Hey, 2K. Oh, Nikki. Nikki Myers. Yeah, Hi, Nikki. Nikki. Myers so we got. Uh, she said uh, Chardonnay and Pinot Gris. Okay. So that's two. Um, Riesling. You can get help from a friend. Oh, I'm sorry. So I'm going to close my eyes. <laughs> the three popular that I'm going to say is Pinot. She didn't say Pinot Grigio. She said Pinot Grigio. So I'm going to say Pinot Grigio. Okay. Riesling. Okay. And Sauvignon Blanc. Three popular ones. Okay. But I'm going to give you three that aren't super popular, but they're really, really good. And some people might know them. Pinot Blanc. And if you know what Pinot Blanc is, it's actually awesome. It's, it's similar to Chardonnay character. It's actually a mutation of Pinot Noir. So sometimes if you're looking at a Pinot Noir vineyard, you'll see a cluster of these greeny gray grapes on it. And those green gray grapes are Pinot Blanc. And what they've actually learned is to graft it and pull those off and start growing them separately. So it's a more full body white, but they don't oak it. It's mostly stainless steel. You find a lot of this in Oregon. My buddy, John Tomaselli, he's the winemaker over at Tory Moore. If you're ever up in Oregon, go see Tory Moore up there. They make awesome wines. They got Pinot Blanc, Riesling, Chardonnay, all on oak, stainless steel, Pinot Noir. They even make a Shiraz uh, port, which is phenomenal. I got some in the basement. Um, it's no joke. Oh, no, no surprise probably that I like Pinot Blanc because I like Pinot Noir. It's well, yeah, it's yeah. basically the same thing. I am in love. Yeah. And then I'm going to give you one last one. Viognier. Okay. It's we talked about it's, this. I know, but it's real good. If you like, it's like in the spring. If you like the smell of like jasmine, fresh flowers, game on. Okay. Yeah. So there, I just threw out a couple extras. And I guess we'll just go with that. I know. <laughs> oh, look, Nikki loves Pinot Blanc too. Yeah, see, Pinot Blanc's awesome stuff. I can't read. That. We have both see, of glasses and we're I failing know. to read. Steve, see, he says Viognier. I'm not going to use the second word he says because this is a child friendly show. Technically. Actually, it's a 20 minute <laughs> over. We're allowed to say, over. damn it. He said Viognier, damn it. I gave up swearing for a while. I'm not going to lie. Did you? I did. Swearing and yelling mm -hmm. at my children. Huh. Doing great. Great. Right, so that means she's not going to, she can still swear and yell at me. No, I can't swear <laughs> at you at all. All right, so we went through our five, or excuse me, our white wine styles, right? Yep. So should I go through some red wine styles? Please. Or do you want us to go? We kind no. of, well, we kind of went through some of the grapes, too. I mean, we did that. We talked about our grapes. A little bit. We went through a little bit of the popular whites. Maybe as we transition, you should hit a little on the rosé, right? We like could do that. Just throw in a, a little blurb. Because okay. I know it gets confusing, and I understand all of that. But Good a little call. blurb on rosé, because... <laughs> Listen, I will crush rosé in the yeah. summer, just like the French and Spanish do. <laughs> so rosé is technically it's it's really more of a red grape than anything because what they do is they take the red grapes and they smash them all up, but they don't let them sit on the skins very long at all, if at all, period. Right. So what happens is it only has minimal time where it's in contact with the skin, so it's only pulling a little bit of that color from it. So you'll see rosé made from Pinot Noir. I see a lot made from Pinot Noir. Oregon does some great um, uh, rosés. And Sellers, theirs is from Pinot Noir as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then in Spain, you'll see some made from Grenache as well. Um, but so rosé is really good. If you go to Europe, rosé really is like the one of the most popular summer wines to drink. So what I got out of so, that was business trip to Europe. Yes. Okay. The in. best part about this project we're working on, we can take trips to wine country and it's all part of work. It is. I'm excited. Yes. We're going on a rosé tour and we'll come live from France for you folks. And yeah, well, and, for a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> so we drink too much. Yeah. And then we're going to turn the camera up. <laughs> um, Batman says we're doing great. Cool. Yeah. He's in our other chat. Oh, he's in the, the Discord chat. He's oh, in the Discord chat. Yeah. I just opened it on my phone. What's up, Batman? 
He said, you're doing great, sweetie. See, we, oh, I love when he talks to me like that. It makes me feel so warm and fuzzy. Honest to God. <laughs> it's crazy. We've got superheroes watching our show. How cool is that? Good stuff. Good stuff. All right, so. I'm in. I'm in. Let's get into the styles of reds. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah. So the way we kind of talked about our white wines on the different styles, um, you're going to start typically like more of your softer style wines, um, softer, a little bit of that fruitiness. Um, and, and I hate to say it because softer, I think Pinot Noir is the one wine that really comes to mind when people talk about soft reds. And it really can go both ways. It can go in that fruity where it's typically maybe a little bit more on the U.S. side compared to an earthier driven Pinot Noir, mm -hmm. which is definitely going to be a red burgundy from France. So, But there's definitely your softer uh, style reds. Um, then you have more of your mild mild, uh, mild and medium bodied reds, Grenaches, mm -hmm. uh, Merlots, um, wines in that category. There's also spicy reds. Um, obviously, the first thing I think people think of spicy is Zinfandel, because uh, Zinfandel has a lot of yeah. that spice behind it. And then you also have your big, powerful reds. So Petit Shiraz, or Petit Shiraz, Cabernet mm -hmm. Franc, Cabernet Sauv, like those big, big reds. Um, and you work your way up. So um, I remember like when I was working in the restaurant biz back in the day, people were, were drinking a lot of white wine and they wanted to start drinking red. And honestly, the thing I said every single time was, you want to get into red wine, go to Pinot Noir first. And I would definitely suggest either Oregon or France. Oregon predominantly because that fruit, I think, is yes. a bit more palatable. Mm -hmm. You really got like that earthy, mushroomy, dirty stuff for the for the French style, but or I said it That's again. <laughs> But Oregon is a fruit strawberry. I mean, it's great and such a soft feminine style wine. So if you're looking to get a red wine, it's definitely look for an Oregon Pinot Noir. I love Pinot Noir. It's so good. And I've been drinking red wine for years. But Should I go always... with some more of that too? Because I got just <laughs> like my... No, <laughs> I always fall back to, to Pinot Noir. It's one of my favorites. It's an easy go-to. Mm -hmm. 100%. So I named a couple of grapes off when I was going through styles. Does anyone have any questions so far? I mean, no. I just, we're throwing it on out. We're going fast because we're kind of on a slight time in. We're not going to do a show for five hours because that would be carried away. But if you have questions, by all means, post in our chat and, and let us know what you guys are thinking. Um, there are other red wines that I think are not as well known as the ones I said because those are typically American. I mean, you get into like Span Spain and Italy. You mm -hmm. got Barberas, which are more of a medium style. You got Chiantis. You got Barbarescos. And you got Barolos. Those are your Italian style. You got Tempranillo in Spain. Why am I doing this? I should have played the same damn quiz and asked you. So I'm going to no, don't play. start I'm over. Not <laughs> three grapes that I did not just say. Are just you three. Off your racker. <laughs> There's. I can think of one I didn't say right now. One. Well, for sure one. We talked. To, okay, Malbec. I didn't say that. See. Boom. See? I'm excited. You're you didn't good. say Malbec. Uh, did you? Did you say Bordeaux? No. I mean, and, and the Bordeaux wines. Grapes in the Bordeaux wines are. This is a serious question. This is past point one hundred and one too, but I'm not going to even go into it. The five Bordeaux grapes, but we'll do that there. Well, time. it's still I win, you? right? One two. Yeah. Uh, you want me to hit a third one? You've lost me. I know. I really should. I really. You don't even I remember, do you? Uh, I that was. Did I say Merlot? Merlot. I don't know. Did you say Zinfandel? You didn't say Zinfandel. No, so I, that's three out of three. All right. Woo! Dance party. All right. We're, <laughs> it's a dance party. <laughs> hey. You did not say Zinfandel. No, I didn't. All right. So Merlot, Zinfandel. You did good. Bordeaux. You named off a Malbec. bunch. Do you know that Malbec is technically, everyone thinks Malbec from Argentina, South America. Do you know that it's actually from France and it's one of the five Bordeaux grapes? Hardly anyone knows this. No. What are the other four Bordeaux grapes now that we're on it? Hit me with all five. Cabernet Franc, Cabernet Sauvignon, mm -hmm. Merlot, okay. Malbec, okay. and the last one, which is another one most people know, is Petit Bordeaux. Oh. Those are your five okay. Bordeaux grapes. Okay. And okay. I'll get into more of the stuff when we do our France class, which I'm really hoping we can pull Dan Greathouse in. I sent a message, guys, an authority on France. Okay. But he's, uh, he's a, he'll teach everyone awesome stuff about French wines. So. You know what we didn't do as we discussed red wines? Hmm. We did not watch you try yours. Oh, jeez. I mean, I could just do that for y'all. Yeah. This is exciting. And I do believe we have a yeah. show coming up, right? We do. And that's kind of why I wanted to, uh, I wanted to do this. We just landed the, uh, this show. It'll be uh, March 24th. Mm -hmm. Is that right? I'm proud of you. I see. Wow. <laughs> Buena Vista, one of the oldest wineries in Napa, California. 
gorgeous, gorgeous wines. Part of the Jean Charles Bosse collection. Got One a, of my favorites. That's like I'm French when I'm saying the same. The guy's great. Look him up. He does awesome online shows too. But uh, we're doing Buena Vista with the winemaker on March 24th. So I busted out the reserve today. Uh, we'll have four wines from them and we'll have him on the show talking all about his wines, the winery. I'm super excited. I always love Buena Vista. And wines. he tells the story. Right, like he's so gonna tell you everything. Extremely exciting to hear the story of the winery and everything behind it and the history, and he really gets into his character. I think that um, there's gonna be information about the count too that's from the winery. That's who he ran at, I do believe. It's gonna be an exciting show. He's phenomenal. So it's mark your calendars, exciting. kids. Yeah. March 24th, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's Buena gonna Vista. be good. It's gonna be good. I'm really yeah. excited. Real excited. And actually, a week from today. While we're on the whole future show thing, I mean, I'm in. Who are we doing in a week? Ooh, on February 24th, which is weird that they're both the 24th. Oh, yeah, that is interesting, isn't Thank it? Thank you. What's that February month, 28th, 28th? Right, right. right. Um, we have Hunter back. We have, do. We have Mr. Hunter Bogle With from Space. Yeah. Like one time Space Night. Yeah. If you've ever had his wines, most people are familiar with Treasure Hunter wines. Correct. But he makes a whole bunch of stuff. His main company is called Three Finger Wine Company. And the one time spaceman, he does a GSM, which is Grenache Serrano Verge blend that he's been doing for years. But there's a brand new wine he's doing this year. It's a brand new release. So it's kind of a release party next yeah, Wednesday. We're going to be all decked out. We are. Mm -hmm. I'm wearing a suit. We're at, uh, I'm wearing a ball gown. Let's do it. Babe. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. We're having a party. Oh, look at Steve Carmineri. He even threw out something funky. I like it. Steve, we're going to have to behave yourself on the dance. Okay. Right. But yeah, so next next week, Hunter Vogel with the uh, release of One Time Space Man. If you're in the Cleveland area, we are going to list a couple uh, stores that are going to carry it. I know Mentor for sure, Red Wine and Brew and Mentor. Mm -hmm. We've already talked to Charles's manager there. They are 100% going to be carrying it, so you can get it from them. We're hoping that the Red Wine and Brew in Cheslin will find out in the next couple days, and there'll be a couple other stores as well. So it will be local. Um, you can grab one, you can grab other. The, the new one's the Cabernet, I believe, the yes. Cabernet Sauvignon Strait mm -hmm. that he'll have. But um, the GSM is also the new vintage. So two new wines. Um, so next week, that'll be an awesome show. Perfect. So. Whilst you taste this. Wine smells great. I mean, it's this is one of those, when we talked about, you know, powerful reds, full body reds, this is it. This is mealtime, steak, yeah. red meat. You want to smell? No, oh, I want to, as you drink it. And we're going to play a game later on how you properly taste in small wines. So. Yeah, that's, that's phenomenal. You get some... Um, you get some good tannins up front. Leaves just a little hint of chalkiness on your palate. Big black fruit. I'm getting a lot of black raspberry and plumminess. Some black cherry. Okay. You even get like a hint of like leather on the finish. I have to interrupt you. I'm sorry. We're on wine 101. Oh, I'm. So tannin. Can you? Can I just? I can or you can, but we, we need to get into a little bit of a definition for tannin for those that don't know. Tannin. Okay. So tannins typically come from two parts of the grape. The skin and the seed. Now it comes from all the grapes. Don't get me wrong. There's other parts of it, but those are really where it pulls a lot of that tannin structure. And tannins. If you ever like had like wine, and a lot of times you get this. I say mm -hmm. Italian wines a lot. Mm -hmm. um, but tannins, you it kind of lays almost like this chalky film, like over your teeth and like the roof of your mouth. Those are tannins. If you really want to get tans, get a grape, even a regular food grape you eat, and get one that has a seed and chew the seed in your teeth. And then push it around your mouth, and you'll feel that chalk. And it's not, it's not going to be super enjoyable, but do at least it looks Do you remember when Barbara did this at the vineyard at M. Sellers? Oh, she did do this. Yes. That's right. I forgot about that. My daughter has now. She's a tan and pro. Yeah. Yeah. She was very disturbed. She was used to like Concord grapes. Right. And then we took her to M. Sellers and went through the vineyard, and she was very. She was on them and Yes. She got all. Her face. Up. Yes, her face was not. <laughs> she was not happy at all. That's, that's tannin, but you definitely get that in the Italian wines for sure. But that's that's super tasty. I'm checking Discord. Seeing if we have anybody that wants to see. Mm -hmm. Hi, how are you? Absolutely, and it's just Batman for you. Oh, good old Batman. Yeah. So I think that covers our white start. And red. Yeah, our white red, our styles, some of the basic or Very like basic. Things, yeah, things you can kind of look for. You know, it's, I know it's tough like when you're like hanging out with friends and everyone's like, you know, you want to like feel like you know what you're talking about and like I mean, it always be like my mom yeah. to say it's nice. Like that's kind of her go-to. That yeah, that's that's Jane. She she you ever hang out with her? She's she's like. We haven't heard from Jane all night. This is nice. That's okay. I, I give her a hard time all the time. Love you, man. But um, but it is hard. It's you know you you want to get those characteristics. So 
Um, you know, I'm gonna give you one other thing before we move on to the next thing. This is to help with you when you're hanging out with friends and you're at a okay. tasting. You know, you go to a wine shop or dinner and you're tasting. So I tell people that there is a triangle when it comes to red wines. And on that triangle in each corner, that's a really effed up looking triangle. Anyways. Your triangle? Yeah. My heart, is okay? I triangle? love wine. <laughs> that's a better okay. triangle. <laughs> we'll work on you. Uh, my bad. Hey, Nick Federico, what's up, man? Um, so anyways, our triangle, we show the triangle again? That was great. So anyways, the triangle, there's typically your red wines are gonna gotcha. go to one direction. Um, your blue fruit, your black fruit and your red fruit. Am I done? You're done. You can. You're, Thank yeah, you. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. So on all these different red wines, most of these reds will lean towards one of those different colored fruits. If you are drinking a wine that leans towards black fruit, you're going to get those darker fruits. So you're going to get those black cherries and black raspberries and, and plums and things of that nature. Um, some varietals that may fall along in that black fruit, Cab Franc, Cab Sav, your big okay. full bodied big giant reds are typically gonna go into that black fruit category. Then if you want blue fruit, you're gonna get some overtones. And this is both you know, in the nose and on the palate. Blue, you're gonna get more of a boysenberry and blueberry. I know, those are my favorite. Mm -hmm. So a couple grapes that go through that are um, Moverdra and Monstrel. Those two grapes are actually the exact same grape. In France, they call it Moverdra, and in Spain, right across the border, they call it Monstrel. Same exact thing. And those are more your fluids. It makes great barbecue wine, by the way. Really? Awesome. Excellent. I wouldn't pick wine for barbecue. Phenomenal. Uh, the Monastrels that come out of Humida, Texas, or Texas, dear Lord have mercy. There's no Texas wine that I know of that's called Monastrel. The Humida, Spain, that's going to be more of your barbecue stuff. Okay. And then your red fruit is going to be like your Merlots, your Pinot Noir, and your Grenaches. Those are more your strawberries, red cherries, that kind of raspberries, that type of stuff. So when you're out and you're doing that kind of stuff, Depending on what you're drinking, it's probably going to lean towards one of those three grapes, and then you kind of have an idea of what kind of characteristics. Like, you know, if you're drinking a big cat, you're probably going to get a lot of plum, things that age. So, just to give you a hint, so you can kind of pull some words out of your head and go nuts with it. I like it. Good? I'm in. All right. Start. No, I appreciate <laughs> it. Um, should we talk about alcohol content of wine quickly? Ooh it's a little touchy subject. Sure. Because you think it's black and white, and it's not. Okay. Right? So again, okay, what did you so, find out? <laughs> what I found out, um, so first of all, works, you can express it in a degree or a percentage, right? So I read the bottle and try and figure out what kind of alcohol percent is in the wine that I'm going to be drinking. I think that's an intelligent decision. Because I think you're looking for the higher alcohol content. It's actually to see if it's a table wine or not. Woo! Ooh, <laughs> fancy. Right? <laughs> um, all sorts of knowledgeable suddenly. Um, so in the United States, you have to clarify that it's here okay. in the U.S. So table wine, um, it's on the label, but no alcohol percent should have more or be above than 14. 14%. Should we check them? I think we should check them. All right. You I first. mean, the Chardonnay is probably not going to be high, but. There is a caveat to this. Remember when we were checking <laughs> Bubbles and Brunch and we did this? Cool. <laughs> no, it's not. Hold on. Wait, there's a caveat. Do you remember Bubbles and Brunch when we were going over the percentages of alcohol? Yeah, we were talking about how like lower alcohol tends to be a little bit of residual sugar, a little mm -hmm. more sweet. So I wanted to know a little bit more about why and where that came from in terms of like table wine and I see a little setting. That's good. Thank you. Thank you. I'm studious. Yes. Listen, <laughs> I have a lot of time on my hands in these studios. <laughs> um, so the number you see on the bottle, so you're at what? You really want to know? No. Yes. <laughs> I asked. Mine. Well, I have a free ticket. You don't want a free ticket. Mine's 13.5, so I'm 100% categorized in the U.S. as a table wine. I'm at 15%. Okay, so 15%. Well, you're illegal. That's illegal. Okay. Well, you need to well that's interesting because, you know, a lot of the big reds I see out of, like, especially out of California, mm -hmm. are in that 14, 14, 5. Like, that's pretty common. 15 is definitely on the higher side, but 14, 14, 5, I see a lot. So wine sold in the United States, imported or um, American, they have a 1.5% leeway. Really? Yes, that's what I'm saying. What you get is not always what you actually have in your cup. So you have a 1.5% give and take. Does it go both directions? Could this be 16.5 then? It could. So it goes from 14. So you could go 15.5. I mean, who's going to drink it if it's nine? Right? 
A lot of people that like sweet wine. So that's where it is. Makes sense. I feel very excited about this. That's really cool. I didn't know that. I really had no idea. Well, I didn't understand why we were looking at the percentage of alcohol last time. Yeah. Like Minus I mean, the sugars and the like the right. residual sugars. So I went ahead and looked it up, and it's literally caps at 14%, only to be categorized as a table wine, and then you get into all kind of other semantics. That you so that's understand. maybe what it's more like. This is more like, I don't want to say boutique but maybe mm -hmm. that's more of where it comes into yes. like boutique style wine instead of being a table wine, which is just like your go-to every day, you know, the Rosso or whatever. But now you, you know call. when you have a dinner party, and we all know I love to cook. And at dinner parties, as you, so now we know we can tell our guests this is a proper table wine, or An we're wine. lying to you, <laughs> and you probably shouldn't have more than one bottle. See, I, I like how you <laughs> caught yourself on that. I she was going to say glass. one glass. I know. And she one bottle, because that is typically how we roll. 100%. I don't know the last time I opened a bottle of wine and had a glass and was very fine with that. Um, I recently have done this. Really? Several times, yes. I'm turning a new leaf in this new year. Wow. Takes a lot of strength. A lot of strength. Um, yeah, well, that's who I am these days. And then I do these. It blows that stuff. I talk. It's gone. Oh, it's done. <laughs> Sorry. Thanks for playing. Take care. Bye bye. Oh, yeah. Perfect. <laughs> um, you want to go to Smelly Wine? Because you often, when we're together out in public, we're not in public. We're I get obnoxious. Together, you do, I wouldn't call it obnoxious, but 100%. You have a very particular way of smelling your wine. I do, and I admit. So you know, sometimes it's obnoxious. It's sometimes it can be obnoxious, and I do apologize. But you know, it there really is something to it. Like I don't just drink wine and get drunk. I really don't. Like for me, I truly love wine because of the history, the mm -hmm. art form. I mean, you know, we do our we do these wine dinners with a couple friends of mine, with my boy yeah. Kieran and Steve and Mike uh, and Hippy and all these guys and. I mean, if you've gone to the dinner with us, I'll have pages of notes, literally, that I write. I just get into it. I don't know. I can't explain it. I, just, I really love it because it's an art form. These winemakers, I mean, every year is different. I mean, you can have the same grape and same yeah. vineyard based on whether the wine's going to taste different. I mean, you could have the same grape and from one vineyard to a different vineyard because the soil composition is totally different. So I don't know. I just I super get into it. So We went to one in Chardon. Remember? Oh, yeah. Do you remember? And yeah. there was a ton of notes and circles and food pairings. Right. And took, yeah, it was, it was awesome. So when I get into it, I mean, I definitely like the idea of swirling up your wine because you're basically what you're doing is you're getting some oxygen in, and more importantly, it, it's really opening up the wine so that you can get those flavors. So if you take a wine, pour it, and then you smell right away, you'll get one thing. But if you swirl and really get some oxygen going and get it moving around and smell, all the aromas come out just way stronger. So it's easier to pick up as well. So that's the idea of swirling. So really get some air into it and get those those aromas rocking and rolling. What happens if you have an aerator into red wine? It's very similar. So, uh, you know, the other night I drank, <laughs> I drank some wine in the red wine in the winter. And I say in the summer, I, I get into roses and IPAs. But um, so I got a Venturi, okay. which is like a wine aerator. And I had a bottle of Young Cristiani OPC. Aaron, I know you love that wine. And I got a cool bottle. It was, it was an older vintage too, it was uh, 2004. Something okay. like that. And it needed the Venturi because it had not seen air in a long time. So those Venturis is really what's about. Two parts, it has a little bit of a, a strainer on the top. So if you have sediment in the wine, it'll catch the sediment for you so you don't end up with your wine glass. Which, which I cool. appreciate. Right, that's good. And it has a swirling technique. So it, as the wine goes through, it's jamming some oxygen and air into it. So again, helping open it up. So that's the idea. So if you have older wines, sometimes it's really good to run them through a uh, an aerator to help get those wines opened up and ready to drink. That's why I said to stay with an old wine, pour it and just leave it open for like eight hours before you like, if you're going to have it for dinner, you have an old bottle of wine, pour it at lunch and let it sit at a decanter all day. I would agree with this except for like nowadays, a lot of people are home all day. True. So you can't open a bottle of wine and let it sit there for eight hours. It's just going to be staring at it mm -hmm. you're like, hmm. Temptation. You your burgers. Um, I can't read that, but. I'm having Riesling and H Swiss, Swiss right now. Mm, yeah. That sounds good. good luck. I know. I asked her if I should get some sex. She's like, that's your year. I want to die. <laughs> I walked in with, with a, a protein plate. Shake. Yeah. And a plate of chocolate covered goodness that apparently I'm eating tonight. That's yeah. just that. <laughs> I walked in with my protein shake and gave you chocolate covered strawberries, pretzels, and bananas. I'm not complaining, none. I'm happy about that. There I am. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Great. Well, get into this. Okay, so that was it. I mean, swirl around, and you should get your nose all up in there. I mean, you gotta it's... be bold, right? Like you have to like literally get your nose right into the airspace. Right. I'm in. All right, as I, you're gonna do it. It's okay. A little too much, but 
Don't sift too hard because you will, especially on higher alcohol ones, you'll, you'll burn your nose a little bit. You know what else I learned is a lot of people like to smell good when they go out, but when you smell good, you can actually compete with the wine as you're trying to smell it and, and really get into the sense you're smelling. It's really, really smart what you said, honestly. Mm -hmm. Like, if you go to a good wine tasting, do not nope. put on a lot of cologne or perfume. Or even a ton of lotions right. that are very potent these days. You should 100% downplay your own scent. That's Shower. True. And head out. It's true because mm -hmm. you will, if you especially have a nicer tasting, yes. you will you will kind of make people cranky because they don't want to smell that stuff. They want to smell the wine, and they can't 100%. mess it up. So don't chew gum before you taste wine. All like the stuff, mouthwash, skip all that stuff. Just you want to clean your palate. Some dry crackers typically are great just mm -hmm. for like getting your palate cleansed and ready to go. Um, and you also probably shouldn't do it when there's something cooking that has a strong scent. So like if we're having a dinner party and I have a big pot of stew going. Or a big pot of sauce going. You don't want to knock yourself. I said sauce. <laughs> you don't want to knock yourself out when smelling wine. That makes sense. Because you want to compete with the food. Because then, what are you actually smelling? You're smelling your uh, pot roast. Right, and that's absolutely not what you want to do. So, um, what if you're cooking in the winter time? Do you have to drink outside? Okay, no one goes outside in the winter. <laughs> we all know I am not a fan. She loves the winter. She's um, <laughs> and you should also become a smeller all the time. This helps, right? If you become a smeller all the time. So when you cook um, during a meal, shopping at the grocery store, just becoming aware of what you're smelling in the produce section. And when you're outside in different seasons, just becoming aware of your environment. I feel like that would help you identify what you're sniffing, if you will. That makes sense. So like it's actually almost like, it's almost like uh, nose or wine smelling training. Well, yeah, in a just, sense, like you're getting yourself used to getting mm -hmm. pick up on those senses. Yeah. Four like different, it. four different tips, um, and two different techniques, right? So you had your nose in there with one long, drawn out sniff. Some people, much like myself, prefer bunny sn sniffs. Can you uh -huh. bunny sniff for us? I think you should bunny sniff. I got <laughs> to see this. <laughs> <laughs> you take short, quick bunny sniffs. Hey, girls, can I bunny sniff? So. And it's different. I can see that. Yeah. Try it. It actually is a whole different. It is. It's kind of cute. See? It's not meant to be cute. It just, it's a game changer. Well, you know what? I, I don't like to do long drawn out sniffs of wine. I think so that makes sense. Sniffs. Then you can, you can actually like, you might be able to pick up on something that you missed on a larger. Right. A you larger you get one sniff and I come in right, you're a little three, softer. four or five times a little softer. Sense. And I can, my nose could then comprehend a few other. Gotcha. Scents. How do you feel about that? I think I'm going to start trying it to see if I like when I go out and like drink good wine, yeah. I'm going to do some long sniffs, I'm going to do some bunny sniffs and just kind of see the difference. Perfect. And when I make my notes, I'll, I'll say bunny sniff smells, long smell smells. Makes Good. sense. That's close. That makes sense. Should we find a friend? Sure. Okay. Just out of curiosity, all you folks that are out there right now, what are y'all drinking? I mean, and can we come? Can can we put you in here? Yeah, does it, if anybody wants to go live, seriously, I'm gonna hit, it takes grab two my seconds. And hit the or Discord. Just, um, if you want to, if you want to jump on here, I am. I can send you a link right to your <laughs> Facebook page. Someone and, would uh, like to know if it's 11. percent Can you drink more? Yes, mm -hmm. the answer is most definitely yes. Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> but it's nice to hear what everyone else is drinking tonight. Like I know that um, um, we have someone drinking a Riesling tonight. Um, I don't know what the two Nikki's are drinking. Two Nikki's, what are you guys drinking? In the interim of them answering our question, um, someone did ask if it's true that alcohol content is determined by the amount of sugar in the grapes during the making of the wine, which is definitely not 101. We're going a little more advanced here. So, so there is, I'm not gonna get, oh boy. I know, I know, I was so, avoiding the question that I came in. I have problems, I like to talk about wine, but. Um, to answer in short, yes, but not always. A lot of times it's what we call BRIX, B-R-I-X. That is the level of sugars in the grapes when you harvest them. Typically, if a grape has higher level of BRIX, you will most likely have a higher alcohol wine, most mm -hmm. of the time. However, there are wines that just come in with higher BRIX because of the growing season, and they don't want it to be high. Like Pinot Noir, you want it to be around 12.5. So if you have super high bricks, 27, 28, a lot of times wineries will actually add water to the fermenters yes. to help tone it down a little bit. So your idea of higher bricks, 
meaning more sugar in the grapes on harvest, higher alcohol. Yes, that is accurate. <clears throat> Excuse me, but they do adjust, and there's things that winemakers can do to help get their alcohol where they want to be. Your superhero oh is drinking an Oberon. Oh, that's good stuff. Where should we? Is Batman available? I don't know. Ask Batman if he wants to go live. Batman, if you're out there, who else is on here? I do appreciate that. Can you drink more if it's 11%? <laughs> and I do feel like you kind of cover this certain types of wine breathe longer than others, correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. Someone. Shake algae vegan chocolate. I like it, Steve. Non alcoholic, but hey. But he's thinking about adding a cab to it and seeing if you can get it a little bit chocolate crazier. Chocolate wine. Ooh. Yeah, I'm in. turn into a chocolate chocolate wine. I'm can in. you actually put, I wonder what would happen if you put your Shakeology powder in a wine. That would be weird. I, you, I can try this. Actually, I would just make a smoothie out of it, like a wine smoothie. We should try that sometime. I have a protein shake in the other room. You didn't put wine in it? I put my cab in there. <laughs> I mean, I'm not making it. I can 100% do it. I will try this off air, and that way, if it comes out horrible, I don't know. The protein time. shake? Yeah, any type, any type like a chocolate power shake. There you are. Mm. I'll let you read this question. I, I feel like I read a lot. Are bricks what are measured using the little telescope magnifying glassy thing I've seen? Yes, John. It says thingy, actually. So I need you to 100% <laughs> call him out for that. Refractometer <laughs> is what it's called. Yeah. And that is that. It's a little magnifying. They put the, the little droplet in there and it measures the bricks content in the actual um in the actual break so yes you're 100 percent correct on uh on how they measure the bricks of wine i was lucky enough to work in oregon in 2007 for two months and 2008 for two months at uh at tory my tory moore learning how to make wine and it was uh it was a pretty awesome awesome experience so jacques sardi and john Tomaselli, thank you for letting me letting me be there and no i will never work harvest again we talked about harvest and oh. sellers. I want to go. It is so hard. We talked about going back and doing a live. We did. We're, we're, this, a live feed from M Sellers for fall. tasting. Mm -hmm. Yep. When harvest starts, we're going to go out to M Sellers Winery and we're going to do a little tasting out there and have the whole harvest thing going on in the background. And we'll steal Matt over for a second while he's working. And That'll we'll, be fun. We'll talk a little bit about winemaking aspects. That'll be fun. Bad red wine and orange juice is a poor man's sangria. That's that's I, I would okay. go with that. Okay. Listen, try um if you're gonna do that, take a bad red wine, do seven up instead, and do some freshly squeezed lemon, lime, and orange. And it might step it up just a little bit. That's my style sangria. Like more lower grenache is what I usually use, but that's, um, that's a good start. Okay. So before we quiz the audience on the ten aromas or flavors, um, is it true? Question. You shouldn't drink hard liquor before wine. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're talking to the wrong two people I, on that one, Jack. <laughs> not me. Oh, you're she's so good. I I like tequila. Well, yeah. Right, um, listen, good. truth is, I don't suggest mixing ever. It's just you know you're gonna get yourself into trouble. Um, I think you should pick one or the other if you're gonna go drink it one night. If you're gonna drink booze, drink booze. If you drink wine, drink wine. I do admit though, like especially after doing wine tastings, going to trade shows and so forth, um, and you've been drinking a lot of wine during a day, doing a trade show, I admit when I go out to dinner with everyone after, I go right to beer. I mean, it's just, sometimes you get wined out when you have like 30 different wines, like my palate's shot. So. My palate is not shot. <laughs> You're like, I'll have more wine. Yes. We good. And will not, when have you ever seen me and yours, we've known each other, consume a beer? I have never seen you drink a beer, actually. I've seen you drink a good amount of wine, but never a beer. Tequila. I've seen you drink tequila. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have. Mm -hmm. No beer. No. How about that? How about that? She don't drink no beer. I do sometimes. I I like Christmas ale. Sorry, Just saying. Yeah. Twelve dogs, whatever. I get a headache every time. Um. Okay. Well, that's exciting. Should we quiz, or should we go over the difference between sweetness versus fruitiness? Because I feel like a lot of people correlate them incorrectly. What's in your wine? So I'm gonna show everybody this because this happens a lot. You can see. And if you can see the little floaters at the bottom. I can. Sediment, my friends. Sediment. Nothing wrong with it at all. I think I'm going to put it on. I'm a jacket. On my white jacket. She has a white jacket on this. Excuse me. We have a fire going in. It's very warm in here. It is warm in here. So. But yeah, you will get sediment, especially in good wine. And sediment's not bad, but that whole aerator thing, that works perfectly for getting your sediment out. So. 
Hammond's husband. Hammond's right. Listen, this is a winemaking show. I'm not doing beer tasting. You can't make me do it. He was okay, saying man. that I love Christmas sale. <laughs> Yeah, Christmas I say, you know what's great? A lot of people love it. I'm not a massive fan. I'll have one as long as I can put a uh, cinnamon rim on it. Cinnamon sugar. Yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. 100%. And kind of vanilla vodka and a float on the Oh, well, now you just mix liquor and we already went through the question <laughs> and that was a, bear, a bad idea. I broke the rules. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> All right, so sweetness, fruitiness. Which one do you want to take, fruity or sweetness? I'm going to go fruity and you can do sweet because <laughs> you're sweet. And you're fruity. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in. All right. You go fruity first. So what am I doing? You want me to give... Tell me what it is. The difference between fruity and sweetness, right? Because I feel like All a lot right. of people confuse that. Okay. So I think the best way to describe it is, you know, when you, when you taste a wine and it's like bone dry, you just think it's bone dry. But there are a lot of wines that are really fruit driven and fruit forward. And they're still completely dry. But because they're fruit driven... They're not as maybe to some more sensitive palates out there, which okay. is an easy way to say it, where a sweet is legitimately a, a, a sweeter style wine. So if you see Rieslings that say, you know, eight and a half, nine, nine and a half, ten percent, even up to 11 percent, they have sugar left in them. 100%. So when you're drinking them, it's not the fruit per se that's mm -hmm. making it taste the way it is the sugar. Whereas if you get a fruit driven wine, like maybe an organ Pinot Noir or like it's dry as a bone, I promise. But and it's twelve and a half percent. But you're getting that fruit flavor from the actual fruit and not from the sugar. It, yeah, so it's the aromas and flavors. Right. So sweetness, just to piggyback off that, is basically the impression on your tongue. It is. So we're gonna do something right now. Oh boy. I'm excited. I have so many like things I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, you're just throwing shit at me. I had a really good day today. I'm on top of my game. I'm using a secondary glass so that I can pour my sediment out. Okay. Mm -hmm. That seems. Yeah. And there's one piece left. Um. And for those of you that have a glass of wine, you can play this game at, at home too. We're gonna play. Um, is it sweet or is it fruity? Okay, let's play. Are you ready? Sure. Okay. Do we have all the wine open? I have a lot of wine <laughs> open right now, and I'm excited. All right. Plug your nose. All the way. But breathe through your mouth and take a sip of that. Okay. <laughs> You're going to you have to plug your nose. I, I'm probably my breath. I can, no, you have to spot. Your, that's the game we're playing. You have to hold your nose when you sip. If you don't hold your nose when you sip, it's not going to work. Now swirl it around your mouth and really taste it. Do you still taste sweetness or no? No. Okay, so it's fruity. Yes. Okay. Next one. It's definitely more fruity. Okay. That's our Chardonnay. You no, know, I think we should try that. A little bit in there, isn't there? I mean, I haven't drank the whole bottle yet. That's all you get. That's fine. <laughs> That's all you get. Plug your nose. I don't like it. What do you think? That's the weirdest way to drink wine. It's, it's exciting though. Is it fruity or sweet? Fruity. So you and, didn't taste any sweetness. Uh, you know what? This one I got a little more sweetness out of for sure. Okay. I would like to do this. You grab the red. This is not easy to do. I think we need like a Riesling, like a oh. true sweet wine. No. You can taste the sweetness in there. Next to a... Mm -hmm. Like a non like a fruit wine. And unfortunately, I don't think we had like, what's the alcohol in this bad boy? The M Sellers? I'm gonna say it's what? Well? Yeah, well. <laughs> Very familiar. <laughs> okay, but that was a fun little game. That is interesting. It is because I think a lot of people relate fruity and sweetness. So automatically, if it's sweet, it's fruity. And if it's fruity, it's sweet. But that's not true. It's, I, I agree with you. What you're saying makes perfect sense. Yeah. I mean, it really does. So now you guys got to try this on yourself. Yeah, like 100%. next time you guys are drinking wine and you have a couple bottles open. I'll get the Nikki's together. We'll open about 12 bottles of wine. <laughs> it's one sip for 12 bottles. Game on. Right? All right. Um, that was an interesting game. Thank you. I'm full of games Yeah, today. that was good. She's a, I had no idea this stuff was coming. She's throwing it at me. I like it. Well, it was listen, spontaneous. My brain today was in a whole different place. I had a really good day. Um, and I was like, we have to come in with some spunk and pizzazz. I liked it. Here I am. All right. All right. 
So let's play a game with everybody watching. Are you ready? I'm gonna. Are you ready? I'm gonna pull up Discord. Ten aromas. Let's see if collectively we can name ten aromas or flavors, whichever verbiage you prefer. Ready, set, go. So, like, this is a terminology game. Yeah. Like, terminology. basically, throw up. And no Google. Yeah, no cheating. You got either. You got to type in one of the two chat rooms. Ten different words, terminology that describes either the aromatics or the flavor profile and of wine. As they pop across, I will cross them off my list. I made a okay. list. Don't cheat. I won't cheat. Okay. I made a list, and we're going to see how many we can get out of these ten. Well, I'm not supposed to say any, right? This is all for these folks, right? Uh, you do, Jamal. Come on, people. You're out there. We see that you're watching. I see the numbers in the upper left-hand corner, so, so I know you're I. all there. So. Let's see what you got to say. Batman, come on, hit me with one. Jump on your fizzy and start typing. Let me hear you. Give me a couple words. What do you smell? What do you smell wine or what do you taste? Man? It could be red, it could be white. Yep, oaky. Okay. Same as toast. Ish. Oh, oaky. We have two oakies. Wow, they both said oaky at the same time. 2K, try again. <laughs> she got Grassy. Some Oh, snap. Grassy and oaky. I'm in earthy. Earthy. Okay. And smoky is good because there are a couple wines in particular that are more smoky. I like that. So also tobacco -y, right? Tobacco smoke. Yeah. I'm in. Tobacco is my word. What else do we have? I almost feel like I need Laurel's to. Laurel's correct. I feel like I need to be playing like some kind of background music like that Jeopardy. Near, 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 near. I'm going to work on that. Okay, you do that. I'm gonna work on it. What else do we have? We have a couple more. Batman's typing. Spicy. Yeah. Spice is a good one. I were talking about uh yeah, Nikki said the same thing. Her like cigar backs. That's that that's that tobacco y spiciness. And a lot of times you get those from like those Zinfandels and so forth. A lot mm -hmm. of South Africa uh, South American wines you get a lot of that from for sure. Like Chilean wines. Well, what's dirty. an easy one? When you think of an aroma of wine, wine is a fruit. The fruits, right? Yeah, you could say a lot. You could fruits of all flavor. Right, you could say I smell raspberries. Green apple. Honeydew. Melon. Pear. Elderberry. Gooseberry. <laughs> <laughs> I had to go there. <laughs> dry. That's stuff. It's stuff. That's I would say dry is more of a style than an aroma. Close, no? no, yeah, but yeah, I'm in. We can go with that. Okay, so we can go fruits. We'll pass fruits up. Cherry, Cherry. there That's we go. One. That's okay. That's a good one. Um, what else? Remember what we said about Sauv Blanc in the beginning? Does anyone remember the term I said about your French style Sauvignon Blancs from the Loire Valley, the Semillon region, or the Semillon style from the Loire Valley? It begins with a G. You use your lawnmower. Hint, hint. What? Gross. <laughs> yeah. um, so yeah. what's up that? Oh, they did say grassy. They did say grassy. Yeah. She yeah. got the phone. I don't get the phone. I done blew it. My bad. Um, what else? Well, I think I think um I think with Chardonnay, you get a lot of like buttery or butterscotch, popcorn butter, that type of thing. Floral, butter, butterscotch. Okay. What else? I'm quizzing you now, too. Oh, dear. Let's see. I need Batman a, Grassy, you are correct. What about like coffee, chocolate, mocha? I think you definitely get that for sure. Mushrooms, mm -hmm. earthy soil, mm -hmm. like a Chilean cabs. Typically, a lot, you, get, you taste a lot of that like soily dirt yeah. aspect of it. Okay. And a lot of the French uh, red burgundies, a lot of that mushroominess. Mushrooms are a big one too. Okay. So that's a lot. Do we miss that? Yeah, maybe a little bit of vanilla sometimes. Oh yeah, that's like in your Chardonnays too. Mm -hmm. I saw that at first, and I did not read it the way I saw it. Chocolate? Yeah, it's not what I saw. Hmm. We're, we're gonna do that as it. We have some good. I mean, we have some people that pay attention. Yeah, we do. Between the one, two, three, four, five, six of everybody, we named all of them. Plus a few. Yeah, it's nice to say that six people decide. You know, and there's a lot more than six of you on, so I'm a little disappointed. Expect everybody to play, partake in our games. I don't participate in the <laughs> There's saying. always those few people that sit back, they're sitting on their couch drinking their wine. And that's fine. That's really good. We want you to tune in. Just so you know, you can watch your uh, these shows on your TV. It's not difficult. 
If when you have an iPad, my mind's blowing my face up. Do it. We look much better when we're bigger. We look much better as people drink. It helps too. <laughs> I would agree with that. Okay. You got anything else? No, I have no more games for you. No more games. I mean, if you want to, unless you want to go through acidity. I mean, we can. I mean, like, uh, I guess we could talk about acidity. I mean, we talked about tannins a little bit. Exactly. Um, I mean, the only, I mean, the, the acidity thing's really simple. I mean, there's certain grapes that are going to have more acidity than others. Sauvignon Blanc, Pinot Noir, those are more acidic grapes. And honestly, if you have wines that are higher in acid, um, look for fatty foods with those. Higher acid wines pair really good with fatty foods, cheeses. And, and so forth. That acid cuts into the, the fatness and breaks it down, and it just it creates a really really good blend. So if you're if you're looking to do some pairings, and we're going to do a whole separate show on on uh, wine one one called food pairings, um, and we'll talk. I can't wait for that because she's going to cook up some shit. So it's going to be good. Here he is. <laughs> we should absolutely host a wine party then. I agree. As we do wine one 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 the second class, like we can have. There's enough room here yeah. where we could have humans here as we cook. I agree. I think it's a good idea. That's right. I'll have the wine. She'll have the food. It's a good combo. Yeah. Absolutely. Once, why Ken, some... I agree. I just told him today I don't drink a ton of red wine anymore because it gives me a headache. You know, some people fall asleep on red wines. Some people get headaches. It really is. Listen, there's a lot more sulfates in red wines and more additives and more flavor. I mean, there's just a lot more that goes into red wines. So sometimes it's allergies. Like, there's different, there's got hundreds of different types of yeast they use to inoculate wine. So it could be that, but a lot of the times I really think it's the sulfates that sometimes give people headaches because um, red wines have a lot more, typically. And there is bad wine out there. Define that. Wine 101. Let's do a brief blurb on a, bad a, wine. A, a, a brief blurb on what, what, what bad wine. Yeah, like so, 60 seconds and under. Come in. So ever open a bottle like, tastes like vinegar. Buttery. Like this, it gets nasty. Like yes. that happens. I mean, it's, it's, and sometimes it just naturally happens. I mean, it's just, there's nothing you can do about it, but sometimes you open up a, bo a bad bottle and it's already turned. I mean, it's important if you're buying wine and you're aging it to always reach out to the winery and ask them about tasting notes and aging on it. Um, mm -hmm. They will all tell you because some wines are meant to be aged longer. Italian wines and French wines, you can sometimes age those 20, 30 years. I've got a 1982 uh, Bordeaux in my basement. Like that's that's older than me. <laughs> there it is. And it's still not ready yet. Yeah, real proud of that. <laughs> <laughs> so it is good. Reach out. California wines, definitely designed to be drank now. They're not meant to necessarily age and unusual. Some some of that, but no. Um, some there's also VA bottle acids that can sometimes if you get a lot of uh you smell like a nail polish remover smell in your nose, those are bottle acids VA. Uh, so you gotta watch out for that. Sometimes wines get oxidized, meaning you have a bad cork, and the cork allows too much oxygen into the wine, so they could turn bad from that. Um, if you smell a wine that smells like uh, wet cardboard, it's a very, very good sign that your wine got uh, the cork was not holding and it got too much uh, oxygen in. So look for that. Um, and then also, uh, what was it? That? Cooked aroma. Yeah, like if you leave your wine, stay away from, stay away from heat. More importantly, stay away from light. Yeah. So when you're aging your wine, it's not. It's not so, light destroys wine just as bad as temperature. And if you're looking for the proper temperatures, 55 degrees and 55% humidity is the ideal wine cellar storage. It doesn't have to be perfect, but if you got a wine cellar, or if you're lucky enough in the Cleveland area, you literally can store your wine in the basement. You're typically 62 to 63 in the winter, maybe 66 to 67 in the summer, and you're totally fine. You have nothing to worry about. Okay. But bad wine does happen sometimes. It does. It does. It's really sad that we know about the good bottle. It's, it's gone. <laughs> Horrible. You should drink. Okay. Should open it sooner. Yeah, I was going to say. Open it sooner. It's good That's idea. what I've learned this evening. Don't wait. Yeah. Sometimes. But then, that's why I said, hit up the winery and ask them. You good? We're good. Does anyone have any questions? I think so. I have a ton of questions on Discord tonight. Um, thank you guys for participating in all of my fun games. Thank you, Adam, for being a good sport. And Playing games, especially the pinch your nose and drink, and I almost spilled it on my face. I mean, I okay. sometimes you have to 
Broke her falls in. I like it. And I'm in on interactive and having fun. Spontaneous wine 101 classes. Here I am. That's it. I'm in a good mood today. That's good. Yeah. I started my day a little rough, but it ended up fantastic. My whole day has been fabulous. And I'm going to go eat some chocolate covered goodness. Oh, yeah. That sure is. You're welcome. So if you guys want to know about our upcoming shows, there's two places that you can see it. For our social media savvy friends, simply go to Facebook. Go into the search bar at the top of your screen and type in winemaker wine tastings and press enter. You will see our page come up, click on our page, and there's a really cool button that says like. You want to press the like button, very important. Um, and we have a section that says events and all of our upcoming tastes that are listed in there, uh, listed there too. If you don't feel like going there and you want to see our events, are also listed on our website, winemakerwinetastings.com. So you can find out about our upcoming events there as well. We will continue to be doing wine one uh, one on one classes. We have our I always call, forget our wines. What do they call? Bang for the buck wines. Yeah, 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 I almost blew it. Bang for your buck wines, which I'm very excited about because as a single mother of two, every dollar to me counts for sure. And there are some really really good wines for. Range. Yeah, right absolutely. in that area. So and, and that's on a Friday, right? It's we're doing it on like a Friday. happy hour. Yeah, we're doing it on Friday, March twelfth. Friday, March twelfth. It's at seven per seven p.m. Eastern Standard Time because it's happy hour. We it's happy hour for other people that are on the West Coast. Gotcha. So we're doing it at seven p.m. It's bang for your buck, and I am extremely excited. So we will list these. We're going to pick what four wines? Yeah. Or do we want to do more than four wines? No, I, I don't. <laughs> Maybe we'll pick. We're not opening it more than that because two of us are not drinking four bottles of wine, or it's gonna be a real shit show. But we could have a thank you about wine. We could, but we'll, we're gonna we'll probably you know I'm gonna probably put together about a list of like eight or ten mm -hmm. based on region and style. Sure. So like if you like lighter style, the bigger, and we'll find everything. So you know we want to make sure that it kind of hits it hits all cylinders. So yeah. there'll be a big listing, and it'll be eight to twelve bucks, and then we're gonna do this online. We're gonna talk about each wine and and what we like about them and kind of where they're from. So. Um, we'll tell you which ones we're going to open, so you know what we're going to be talking about, and we'll also have some listed so that you can just buy some and drink with us and have fun. And we'll list the retail shops that you can get them at. Absolutely. And plan ahead, because we would love to bring in people to our show. It'd be super fun. So if you want to have a wine party at your house, um, you can invite a few people over. I will walk you through all the steps and show you how to do it. You can set up your computer. You can have a few people over, have some drinks, um, have your bottles of wine. I'll help you price it out the whole nine yards. And we'll actually bring your wine party into our show and you can ask questions and all that good stuff. So if you're interested in doing that, please shoot us an email, uh, info at winemakerwinetastings.com or a message through Facebook works too. Yeah. Or Kristen at winemakerwinetastings.com and go personal. Say hey. Here I am. <laughs> so we got some cool stuff coming up. Like our page, go to our website, check out our calendar. Uh, new wineries being added on a regular basis. Pre-order your wine for February 24th, March 24th. Yes. Absolutely. A must. Yeah. Either call your local wine shop and get it um, and pick it up from them, yeah. or you can order directly from some of the wineries. Just just look at the event page for the information, but definitely get your wines ready. One time spaceman next week's gonna be super fun. Hunter's awesome. We're super excited to have them. And we're gonna have really good food, two wines, so I can cook up a storm. You're cooking next week? Maybe. Maybe so are we doing the show from your house? No. Valentino, I have a puppy named Valentino. <laughs> Valentino's probably not gonna be okay with that. That's a good point. So he's gonna come over. No. All right, so we'll have food ready, and then we're going to come live to you here with Hunter um, and his crew in the one-time space for next week. So, And we're going to have our tasting scoring sheet next week. Oh, yeah. That's complete. New, new thing that Kristen created. She's got a full-length tasting sheet. It's pretty sweet. It's actually very sweet, yeah. and it's romantically written, it, it is. which is my favorite part, it is, is that it's very romantically written because we all know why, and then I, I think it's very romantic and sweet. It is. When I saw it, I kind of hugged myself. So that's up. We'll put that up. Yeah, well, the link to that. So you can download the sheet and print it, and that way you can put your tasting notes on it. You can score your wines. Yeah. Um, all that cool stuff. So I'm excited. You miss anything? No. We good? We're good. We have Hunter. We have Buena Vista. We have wines on a budget. Mm -hmm. We have Future Wine One. Yeah. That's it. I think we're good. Yeah. Sweet. We have too much wine. Oh, no. I get too crazy here. Thank you for all sharing on our Wind Down Wednesday. I hope you guys had fun. I hope um, that your um, chocolate shake algae shake was great tonight. Um, and your smoked, was it smoked Swiss? It was, yeah. 
Uh, the smoke Swiss was good. I'm going to need some chocolate right now. And I really appreciate your support and you guys tuning in. I hope that we were ever so slightly entertaining. We try our best. <laughs> we had a good time. We did. I always had a good time. I always had a good time as well. Cool. 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 We'll see you guys soon, guys. Bye. Cheers. It's gone. Oh, mine's gone.